Hi everyone, it's Toby and welcome to my channel. Today, we're gonna to be doing a really quick, simple sketch of a couple of people. So this is a scene, but the scene is gonna be focused on the people, which is a bit different from normal. Normally, we sort of add people into our scene. So in this video, we'll have a look at how that changes things, how that changes the level of detail, the focus, but also how it's still the same. It's still about shapes, loose colours, bold colours, you know, the same steps we always go through when we do our ink and watercolour sketches. And with that said and done, it's time to produce ourselves a lovely little scene involving a couple of people. So this is a photo from Jordan's Mill near Biggleswade in sort of East Anglia near Bedfordshire. And what we're going to do is we're going to focus this scene around the people. So if you've seen the stuff I've been talking about with simplifying, focusing on silhouette, making shapes, well, that is our first step. So our first step for drawing people is shapes, but focusing on that person's silhouette. So we've got two people here to grab, haven't we? Now the first is this gentleman sort of slightly leaning over, but we're not focusing on drawing the man, we're focusing on finding the shapes. So there's the shape of his hair. Then there's the sort of shape that his chin forms and the rest of his face. And then there's the shape of his neck. And then there's the shape of his body. This is important, getting the shape right, because it's going to get us that kind of hunched over feel. So we can sort of gradually get that. Be really loose, be gentle on yourself. And what you'll find is it doesn't matter if you do a few wrong lines. It doesn't matter, you know, when we come back and we can add in the shapes of these arms and they're going to sort of ghost over other bits we've done. That's all fine because as long as you're being loose and gentle, you'll be able to do that. You'll be able to come back, make changes. And then what have we got coming down here? We've got the shape of his legs. So we've initially we've got this kind of basically a rectangle coming down, haven't we? And then they separate out, but the silhouette, which is what we're focusing on, is basically another rectangle. Albeit the rectangle has a wonky bottom. So at the bottom we can separate out into our two feet and get those there. And hopefully we've got something of his posture. It might not be perfect, but we've got some feel of this man leaning over a little bit. Then in the background, or not really in the background, just behind him, we've got his friend, wife, partner. Again, we've got simple shapes. The hair forms a, a simple shape. The face forms a simple shape. And again, got this sort of hunched over feel. This time we're going to capture this arm as another shape sort of poking out, poking back in and finishing off the rest of that body shape. The legs come down. We can't see them very much, just see the tip of her toes. And look, we now have two people stood there. What I'm going to do is build the rest of the scene around them and then we can come back and we can add a little bit more sort of specificity to them, make them a little bit more real. So what's the rest of the scene? Well, firstly, let's give this lady her plant. So she's looking at, I think, some little herbs and things in the, in the front there. So again, we're just talking about shape some way. So we've got a shape of the flower pot, shape of the plant with a few little textures. Underneath, the important context here, I think, is having this little stack of plants even I think these signs are probably a little bit of important context. It sort of tells you that this is a, a shop selling plants rather than just a, a garden or something like that. Come back and just get the little legs. Now the thing about the legs here is we need them to be in the right plane, the right sort of level with our people's legs. So just when you're popping them down, just get that sense that they're in the right plane, they're in the right level. Same back here, so just get that sense they're in the right level, and then we're basically good to go. Now we build in a few more of these plants, really simple shapes, and just use these same ideas. As long as your ideas are consistent, then everything just sort of will make sense. If your ideas, your way you're making your marks are inconsistent, different all over the scene that's when it gets busy and challenging that's when people will look at your sketch and not know what's going on if I just do these same loose shapes going all the way back 
at least for me and you might agree you might not but for me I just look at that and I go well I know this is the same thing it's like a stack of plants and it'll become obvious it's plants as we build up a little bit more and what else is important for the scene well we need to get the building in here don't we so we can get that sort of little perspective line coming in we don't want too much detail about the building it's just a little background to our people really but having the idea that there's a door here that will tell you something about where they are and maybe just having the idea of this roof as well maybe the roof is just another sort of useful frame for, for what's going on in this scene you can even pop the top of the roof in I'm for shortening it quite a lot here but that doesn't matter for me because this scene is actually about these people all I'm doing now is just making these lines now that I've got them in and I think they're okay I'm making them a little bolder still focusing on the key shapes in the scene just making them a little bolder notice how the people have sort of dropped back they disappeared so that tells us that we need to just embolden them now for me this is where I'm going to stop I can always add more ink to these people later but what I want to do first is add my loose colors because then that will tell me how much more ink to add how much more detail without getting too focused so with my colors I like using a little bit of yellow a little bit of red sometimes a little bit of crackdown sienna and between these colors if you mix them if you make them nice and watery and that's the key here really watery really light you get these nice sort of skin tones and you can even mix on the page like this and then pick up the color you like and ta-da we have our sort of natural feeling skin tone we can use that we can vary it a bit so maybe we need a bit more quinacridone for the the arms that's too strong do you see instantly that's just too strong and it becomes unnatural but a bit more water pick up some of the pigment and we're back to having something which feels good which feels real we've got gray hair here so sometimes hair is really obvious how to color it gray hair well it's all about the shadows and for me i sort of make something of those shadows with a nice bit of cobalt blue i like using the cobalt blue to suggest some shadows and then leave that negative space leave that negative space open this man's got a basically a white shirt on as well hasn't he so we will we'll continue this idea of shadows we'll just use the same little bit of cobalt this time it's got a tiny bit of um green mixed in there just from the edge of my palette and that just gives us a slightly different tone to play with for this lovely shirt underneath we've got brown or black trousers so for me i'm going to get some indigo a little bit of crackdown sienna and mix those and what happens you get this kind of neutral brown a bit more indigo and it'll go more dark and that's what i'm going to use and i'm letting everything blend and merge that's absolutely for me absolutely fine might not be for you in which case take a slightly more careful approach but for me that's what i really enjoy just a bit more indigo now because we can start almost drawing what we want to draw later we can <clears throat> use this sort of paint to just start picking out where we're going to separate out shapes we could even do that up here we could start really separating out those darkest shadows don't want to overdo it because we will be coming back with another layer of color here to basically apply these dark shadows now this lady's got a nice pink top hasn't she so we'll just warm that up with a nice red and again plenty of water keeps that sort of pink light feel to it instead of it being an overly bold red and actually she's got very similar colored trousers and you can't again can't really see them as they split so we will just use a nice bit of indigo to keep it feeling similar to his trousers to not be inventing too much and what else is important to get here well there isn't too much left that's really important everything else starts to get loose and less important we'll get this uh this flower pot again it's just a got a dark pot and a lot of shadow so i'm gonna let these greens and this indigo again just blend and merge and become a bit murky I like the idea of pulling out we made a big feature of this i like the idea of pulling out this little sort of array of plants so i'm going to do that with a nice bold and warm quinacridone sienna just wash that around and again a bit of indigo to start getting this idea of shadow in a few places and also separating out what we might be drawing a bit of later and there's got a lot of shadow over here so 
we'll just add a bit more indigo in. Now all of these plants, again, we made a big deal about these. So I'm gonna get a bit of, this is green appetite genuine. Then I've got also gold green, cheating greens in my palette. If you don't have cheating greens like me, just get some cobalt blue or a nice blue, ultramarine blue, bit of yellow. And then in between that, you've got tons of greens. You can even add a little bit of brown in there and you'll get even more different greens. For me, I cheat because I can, because I like these greens, because it's just a bit quicker for me. So I'm going to use these cheating greens. And can you see the shapes of these plants in the back? Not really. You can't see them. So I'm not going to make a big deal of them. I'm just going to let these colours mingle. Then these ones in the front, you kind of can. So these ones in the front, I'm going to be a bit more specific with. A little bit more specific. And also, I'm going to give them a bit more of a sort of specific suggestion of a pot underneath. Again, for me, things blending and merging like this, I really enjoy. So I'm letting it happen. If you don't enjoy that, it's fine. Just take a slightly more careful approach. Underneath, going to get these start of these shadows. Sorry, that's my uh, my dog just getting up. So you can hear him having a little shake in the background. And a little bit of sort of suggestion of detail on these signs. Again, we're going to come back with some ink, make a bit more of all of this. And last but not least, do we need anything on the building behind? Maybe we want a little bit of something, don't we? So let's just start with some little splashes of quinacridone sienna. That can just come down in this kind of pattern of, uh, it's sort of wood pattern, isn't it? These wood, what am I trying to say? These planks of wood, that's what I'm trying to say. They can come down can come down all the way to the trees. Got a little bit of texture there. These ones I'll do less of because they're less important. This doorway, well, that will have some indigo to get that shadow. And this is gonna start creating a little bit of a sort of negative space of our people. Sort of painting around them rather than painting them. With that, we've got little careful bits to add in like this if we're going to do this we need to do it right so little careful bits of shadow around their heads in between their heads coming down here and there we go and lastly having done that just let's pick out the door frames really loosely for me i'm going to let these colors blend let them blend and merge and seek seep in together and a few little textures and a bit of shadow being cast by these people. And that is it. That is layer one done. Bit of protracted layer, but that's because we are taking care with our colours today. Going to let this dry for a couple of minutes, then we'll come back. We'll add our bold colours. Nice and dry now. So all we're going to do is just bring out a few of those little areas that we want to just invigorate. So I'm going to get my same skin tone, but this time just... Look at this, just a tiny bit bolder. Just work until we got a tiny bit bolder. And I'm basically gonna try and pick out suggestions of the sort of shapes within the shapes for our people here. So for, for this lady, actually her whole face is in, in a bit of shadow. For this chap, he's got a little bit of light glancing off in a few places. So I'm leaving some of that color from underneath. Our arms are just, again, shapes within shapes. Make them have that little feel of something extra going on just by giving some layers to this color. And I've actually turned it the wrong way around because I wasn't focusing. So I've given him a, a shadow on the wrong side of his arm. For me, you know, would have preferred it to be right, but it doesn't really matter. I'm not gonna bin this whole thing just because that little bit's wrong. Coming down, we'll get this man's shirt in and now we can focus on the sort of details of it. We've got little stripes that we can see in places. So we can start adding those in in this layer of color, just gently and gently. And that way, this little layer of colour is adding not just the sort of uh, shadow, but also details. Now, we already started the shadows a little bit in his legs, didn't we? So we need like a nice bold colour, perhaps a little bit of indigo and quinacridone sienna. So instead of being black, we've got a nice bold brown. And now we're just trying to find where do the legs sort of have their own little separations, maybe even like frame a pocket. Leave a, I know that there isn't negative space here, but leaving some sort of artistic negative space for me is always okay. Even if it's invented like this, it's always okay. This lady we did 
already her legs in indigo so i'm going to do the same again now this rosy pink well look you see how there's light and shadow in her shirt as well so we're going to come back in with a red mixed with that indigo and it's just going to hopefully give that effect of light and shadow coming through and finally for our people finally the hair just a really bold punch of of our cobalt just in a couple of places and is that realistic no but does it give the effect i want it does indeed so that's why i'm doing it for the effect not for the realism for the shape for the idea for the looseness not for the realism going to keep moving like we did before we move then into our plant so we'll get this plant just a little bit of light and shadow that's what this layer is all about same for our little plant pot then we'll move and we'll move into our little sort of plant area get this light get the depth the, the shadows maybe even exaggerating some of the shadows just to really get our our scene coming to life and this i hope you can see this boldness this is where our scene does really start to come to life underneath look these shadows i'm going to link them to our people drag the color of the people across a bit more shadow under here maybe i want it a bit darker a bit more indigo in there they want to take over the the table so we're going to leave little white gaps as well and then we're going to move into adding some murky greens into this and a sort of punchy a bit of green just again to get this shape in these little stacked up plants that we talked about you see this this layer is much quicker because we've already got the ideas then all i'm trying to do is add a little bit of extra shape with some slightly bolder colors and almost in places just using my my brush to draw little shapes that I want to come out but we don't have to overdo it we don't have to focus too hard in the back I'm going to take a much looser approach this time so we'll just get some of our colors to splash outwards from our people even touching little bits of cobalt to just lift those those shadows what I want these shadows to achieve is to highlight our people has negative space to to push them forward i don't really want to bother to explain actually what's going on with the building so we can just be again really loose really gentle with our colors just suggestive with a few details like the the woodwork of the door and i think these walls can just be splashes and that's it that's all i'm going to do for this layer so next we just come back with our ink. We need this to be completely dry. We come back with our ink and we're going to be focusing on how we can bring our people forward, add a couple of little details, maybe some bold colors in a couple of places to finish off our lovely little scene. And here we are, we are on to step four. Step four, of course, restructuring. So we're bringing back our ink. And all we're going to do is find, so we need our reference. We need to think about that. We also need to think about what's actually happened on our scene. So that means responding to what our watercolors have done and using our ink now to find those important lines. So if that means changing our people a little bit, well, that's what I'm going to do. And we talked again about applying a couple of little details, perhaps. And this is where we look carefully. We look carefully at our people and go, what are the important details? Well, well, maybe his ear here is an important detail because it crosses the shadow boundary. And look, he's got a pair of sunglasses on. That's an important detail. It tells you a lot about the day and a little bit about him. So we can easily add that in, but not over-focusing on it. Got the suggestion of a nose. We could just do that really gently and perhaps just give his chin a tiny bit more shape. And then we can bring in his neck just these small details but not over focusing it not creating a mask not creating this sort of really big face just because that's the most important bit for our brain when we see people coming down let's just get his the shape of his arm in here making it feel sort of in a natural position and look his arms got a bit big here hasn't it but with our simple little line work we can actually just correct that we can correct that and now it just feels like the paint's glowing it doesn't feel to me like his arms are quite as large and overdone as it was before 
Similarly here, I've got his trousers. Really simple to connect these little lines that we created earlier. And just really simply grab our gentleman. You can give him little pockets if you want, just suggestions. Also some little trouser textures with our, with our pen now. And then do the same for his wife, his partner, his friend, whoever this is. And there we go. Now this lady, we, we barely suggested her arm at all, but actually how easy is it to see what her arm and shirt are doing? I would say very difficult. It's not clear from the reference, but it's very tempting to draw what we think. But since we can't see it, we don't need to draw it. We don't need to draw it because we'll just be inventing the scene instead of creating the scene in front of us. She does have glasses on, but this is a case where maybe you want to ignore them. So you could just give her a little eye, just a tiny eye, tiny shape of a nose. And actually you've got a realistic person. So as long as you're being really gentle about these things, it's okay to slightly change the details, slightly change what's going on. We've got like a handbag here. That'd be a nice touch. We can add that in. It's not even a handbag, so it's just the, the, uh, the handle, the, what am I trying to say? It's just the, the, the bit you carry the, uh, the handbag by, um, and we can, we can pop that on easily done. Obviously we've got this plan. I think this bears sort of bringing forward with some nice bold lines. And then we keep talking about this planter. So let's work out how we can make something of it. Again, little bits of writing, just suggestions on there. That tells you what these little signs are, these white areas. So again, just little bits of suggestions of writing. Really easy touch to sort of bring things forward and add a lot of context. We can make a bit more of these legs. We spent a little while actually painting them so we can make a bit more of them and separate them out from those ground shadows. Some of these plants, we don't want to overdo because we can't see these ones very well, but these ones, well look, we can just continue to use our pen to create those textures and bring them forward as well because these ones we can actually see. Same with our little pots at the bottom, little scratchy marks. And with that, we're basically done. Don't overdo this background at all. Just a few little marks. Just, I think, to make sh make it sort of evident that we've meant to sort of introduce this. A little bit of texture to show us where the pavement is, where this sort of gravelly ground is. And just like that, maybe a few textures on the wall, really gentle, light, little sort of scratches here and there. Maybe I've even overdone it, so I better just stop there. And just like that, I'm going to pop my signature on. And I don't think, in this case, I don't think I need to do step five. Step five, where I normally add a few little touches. I think we've got lots of details. I've already added the splashes in. And I think this scene is, is working really well for me. So I'm going to hide my signature in there, call this finished, and say, you know what? As with anything, I normally have this five-step process. We've been flexible at the end. We've kept it simple. We haven't got to go down the full five steps. And we've gone from beginning to end, focusing our sketch on people and creating the essence of those people, not getting them perfect, but pretty happy with this. I think it's a really fun little sketch. So let me know what you think. How are you feeling about sketching people? Leave a comment down below and do check out my other videos on sketching people, which I'll link in the description of this video. So thank you everyone for watching my little sketching videos. If you enjoy my content, please do subscribe to my channel because it makes me really, really happy. Thanks again.